Welcome to my session. My name is Dr. Adaleskaya, and today I'm going to talk about the cybersecurity dilemma. Currently, I work at Komodo Cybersecurity as CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer. And if you would like to get in touch with me, those are my contact details. As you can see, I'm nearly available on every social media platform. And the surprise for the session is, if you go ahead and follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, tag about the session, you can, five of the people can be uh, winning one of my books, which you can see in the screen as an ebook. So all that you have to do is go to my YouTube channel or Twitter, follow, make a comment about this session, and uh, hopefully you are going to be one of five winners. All right, let's go to the topic. What is a malware? Where is this malware problem coming from? I talked about this a lot. As I said before, I work at Komodo Cybersecurity, and I spoke with our founder, Meli Abdelhaul, a lot about this. We are, as a company, we really think a lot about it. Why is this malware pro problem keeps coming? All right, let's, let's find out. I think you all know what a malware or ransomware is, right? It is all over the news. We all know about it. It's a problem. So a malware in a basic matter is a legitimate code within the context of the CP instruction, which does something illegitimate. Most of those things which is done by malware is aimed to harm us. When I say us, of course, not maybe directly as a human, but our infrastructure, our computers. The code is legit because the CPU understands and executes the code. And the only difference between a malware and a goodware software is malware is designed either to steal or whatsoever, where the usual software is designed to help us or solve a solution. As I said, Malware, whatever it does, such as ransomware, it's there to give us pain. I mean, it's quite painful to deal with the uh, large scale ransomware attack. Read the news. Okay. For malware to be successful, it needs three very important components. One, it needs write access to a hard drive. Two, Somehow, it needs to write itself to the registry. Three, it also needs to add itself to the common interface. As long as we cannot stop this, malware is going to cause us always a problem. So what can we do? What should we do? Of course, we should find a way that uh, the malware cannot execute. Uh, we should be able to stop it before it gives us a problem. Okay, here's the question. Why are we allowing them? If we know a malware is going to cause us trouble, why are we allowing to run it? Why are we not finding a way which can, uh, which can basically stop executing in our computers? Because the reason is because you have choosing a wrong cybersecurity posture. You know what the posture is, right? So you should not sit like this in a desk. You should always keep a straight posture. Same things apply to cybersecurity. In our opinion, there is three types of cybersecurity posture. Let's talk about them. One, you're gonna allow any code, which is good, and you're gonna deny the bad ones. Hmm, sounds good. You're gonna allow everything which is good, and you're gonna, you're gonna deny the rest. Hmm. So only good, regardless if it's bad or unknown, you're gonna block it. Or the third way is, we're gonna allow the good and also the rest, but with an ASR, which is the attack surface reduction. All right, let's talk about what I mean. Allow all, deny bad. I mean, if you really know what the bad is, all good, you know, but we all know that there is lots of false positives. Can you imagine 
you are a pilot and um, or you are sitting in a you know tower which communicates with the pilot and somehow your anti malware decided that this code is bad you can cause some serious trouble so above all deny bad sounds good but is it really possible to achieve that we all know there is no 100% security in cyber security. So no matter which organization you go, you use, there's not gonna be 100% security. Look at, at the news. I mean, all the big boys were hacked. I mean, I'm not saying that. There is two types of organization. One, they know they've been hacked. Two, they don't. This was, uh, this race belongs to an ex FBI director. If you want, Evidence that there is no 100% cybersecurity, look at these figures by Gartner's. Each, by each year, the spending for cybersecurity is just getting higher, higher, higher. And it's predicted it's going to be nearly double the figures just in 2025. Where are we looking today? Today, I think we reach already to 100 billion, again, based on Gartner. Uh, but I don't have the exact figures. That's why I wanted to uh, use the past year's figures. All right. Allowing all, denying bad, basically, means if you miss one detection, you get breach because the hacker is not going to sit and uh, wait until, you know, uh, the CPU decide their code is good. They're going to always try outsmart us to be successful. So here's the question that I want you to ask yourself, which I'm not going to answer as the speaker for today. How can we prevent the damage when your cybersecurity product fails to detect it? You know what happened uh, with the sunburst attack. You know what happened with many ransomware attacks, which hits the news. What was the second question? What was the second posture? It was allow all, deny rest. Hmm, this sounds good. Really? But is it really user friendly? I don't think so. It has lots of issues and uh, allowing all, denying rest, which is unknown and bad, can cause lots of troubles. Honestly, practically impossible. It's not even worth to talk about it. The third option, the third option is a lot of good, which you know, and the rest should go to ASR, as we spoke about the attack surface reduction. And based on the ASR rules, we will not restrict users by denying any application from running on their computers, but we are only going to deny any unknown bad stuff like ransomware, malware from causing damage. How? We're going to run them through ASRs. How? We're going to look if they are really uh, an attack surface. But, you know, in the attack surface, we're going to look if they really uh, a de possible damager or it's a good file. Again, unfortunately, we have very limited time in this session to talk about, but uh, you can uh, go to my YouTube channel. I have a couple of videos or my blog, a couple of articles about this. Attack surface reduction can be via human attack surface, basically improving your posture against social engineering attacks is example. Network attack surface will be looking at your primary devices. System attack surface is going to look at your systems, of course. Application attack surface is going to check your applications where all these issues coming from. Don't forget, malware is some sort of application. And of course, we have to look at the OS, operating system, kernel uh, attack surface. And when we look at the lock at Martin's cyber kill chain, we see that most of the issues happens in layer five and six during installation. And of course, uh, so uh, again, I'm gonna keep this on site, but all what I'm asking to do is, sure that okay now how can we 
ensure cyber security. First of all, we, we're gonna ensure that no matter what endpoint, XDR, MDR, EDR, CDR, PDR, TDR, whatever you run, you have to ensure that it runs in cybersecurity posture tree. It should contain that malware in an environment that it cannot cause you damage. Besides that, we have to learn as defenders to think like hackers. So how do hackers think? Sophisticated, sophisticated attackers will only choose avenues that they can exploit successfully. I mean, if they know they cannot hack you, why should they spend time? At the end, they're performing a job. They will always look for the weakest link, the easiest path to attack. When we look at the most successful attacks, they leverage most probably known vulnerabilities such as misconfiguration, human errors. Again, this is based on the rising data breach report, which I highly recommend you to go and read. Attackers create noise and noise is their best friends because they can just redirect the attack while taking your attention to somewhere else and be successful. They try to identify assumptions that security depends on and of course, they always think outside the box. All right then, how can we breach? How can we limit a breach damage? I said, think like a hacker. I repeat, learn to think like hackers. So an example, how hackers think. They will look what instrument value of they trying to get. Do they have any data to steal? Example, EA games. Uh, they steal more than 750 gigabyte data. And then they, uh, you know, they wanted to run them. They run them, the computers, and they wanted to get some money, run them, where EA refused to pay, which is smart. But the hackers, unfortunately, they released their IPs which includes the FIFA, very popular game, FIFA 2022 source code and lots of uh, game source code, more than 750 gigabyte data I'm talking of. So they had the data, an example. What else? They always ask, what is my mission here? What can I do? Am I stealing credentials? Or am I gonna literally move to the network? to devices, to misconfigurations. How can I social engineer someone? Example, the Apple social engineering attack, which happened a few weeks back, where more than 100 uh, celebrities' personal photos were displayed, unfortunately. They were really bad pictures. And of course, hackers, they want to come back. And when they come back, they want to continue from where they left. It's like bookmarking. For that, they need admin privileges. Like, are they stealing the credentials? Did they dump it in? What credentials they can use to move ahead? If, is there any detection in the organization? What kind of detection is there? What can they do to bypass it? Is it just an antivirus? Or is it an XDR, TDR with all these fancy letters? which you see that organization itself getting hacked. What else? They will ask also, what can I do from here? What is my next hop? Uh, is there any security zone? Do they have defense in depth? How do they protect the data? How can I steal the data without getting caught? And with this knowledge, we have to also build a cyber defense strategy. What is a cyber defense strategy? It is basically starting with a couple of components. First, have a cyber strategy, which sits with your organizational risk plan based on the risk tolerance, and again, based on your organization's goals. Your security strategy should not be as secure as possible, remember? There is no 100% security, but there is security as necessary. 
And uh, I wrote together with Yuri, or I wrote multiple books about those topics. But honestly, I'm not the first who said that. I'm pretty sure you heard about Sen Chu, who lived 2,500 years ago. And he said, strategy without a tactic is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without a strategy is the noise before defeat. So what does this mean? It means you should keep your systems up to date. You should implement MFA. You should adopt pass share or uh, pass share or the password policy. You have to ensure that every system, every device is up to date as much as possible. You should be aware of the security configurations. You should assume that you can get hacked any time. And as a result, you should create an incident response plan. You should conduct a business continuity assessment, a cybersecurity assessment or pen testing. You have to implement risk quantification technology to be able to highlight the threats into your environment. I give a couple of examples during my session. If you keep, if you protect your paper clips and your diamonds with equal vigor, of course you will soon have more. You will soon have more paper clips than fewer diamonds. So try to separate. Try to prioritize. Know your threat actors. Knowing your threat actors is going to help you to build a better strategy. Know your weaknesses. Knowing your weaknesses is going to help you. Your defense the third one know your technology knowing your technology will empower you now putting all this together knowing your threat actors together with your weaknesses and the technology that you are using in your organization will master your defense this is not all you have to also spend some time with your employees with your co-workers with your colleagues. Cybersecurity is not just the CISO's role or CEO's role. Cybersecurity is an ongoing responsibility which, which needs to be built and shared across the organization from the cleaner all the way to the CEO, from the CEO to the contractors, from the contractors to the vendors, and maybe to your customers. Cybersecurity, as I said, is not just the CEO's or CISO's responsibility. You have to build a cybersecurity culture that everyone in the organization contributes towards, uh, towards helping you. For that, you have to help them to understand the risk and they will help you to mitigate them. Example, if you teach them about the phishing strategies, how hackers come through, what will happen when you click and you can customize it based on the audience that you're talking they might report something early to you where you can stop an attack early as well and don't forget you can't defeat the threats of the present with the tools of today from the past sorry <laughs> you have to okay i repeat again you can't defeat the threats of the present with the tools from the past. To be successful today, you need to be up to date with technology as well as with, as I said, software. And finally, in cybersecurity, building a strategy is essential. As a cybersecurity professional, you should not spend too much time on what you are strong at but you should continue to focus on finding your weaknesses and of course, closing them down. Don't forget, no pain, no gain. You have to build a cyber strategy. It's gonna be painful, but hopefully it's gonna keep you secure. Choosing the right cybersecurity posture, understanding how malware and hackers things, implementing the right defense strategy is going to make you more secure. With this, I'm coming to the end of my presentation 
and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. And please don't forget, if you go ahead, follow me at Twitter or connect at my YouTube channel, you will you can win five ebooks of one of them of your choice for five people. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Dr. Adolescare.